Hello everyone, please wait a while. We are coming as soon as possible. Yes. Hello, everyone. This is Shomik from Hassan Sales Academy again. So we talked and we mentioned that we will be arranging a live session today about IELTS speaking. And first of all, I would like to say extremely sorry for the interruption. We tried more than two times to connect um, at 8 p.m., but unfortunately, we were not able to connect in the right time because some technical problems, we had to follow uh, the restrictions and we were not able to connect and we were not able to start our live session actually at 8 a.m. So for this reason, now we are going to start. Now we are going to start our live session. And I again want to say, this is Shomik from Hassan Sales Academy. I'm one of IELTS experts. And I'm working with Hassan Sales Academy from 2018. And joining with me. Hello. Hi, everyone. This is Hassan, founder of Hassan Sales Academy. Today, we are going to have a complete live sessions on a speaking module in IELTS test. So inshallah, you will get the overcome situations, how to overcome and get it from a good school in your IELTS test. OK, stay connected with us till the end, inshallah you will give some advices and tips that's really very helpful for your speaking test. Thank you. Thanks a lot, sir, for providing your valuable speech. So now I would like to share my own experience and now I'd like to share about a whole idea about IELTS speaking. If I want to talk about, you have to speak in English. Okay, it's not a big deal. I can easily speak in English. Anyone will say that thing, like if I, uh, talk like if I talk my uh, uh, to my elder brother or uh, my younger brother. That is, you have to talk about your school. You have to talk about your college. You have to talk about your university. It's not a big deal. He or she will say uh, that is uh, yes. I can say about my school. I can say about my college. I can say about my university or whatever you want. But the my question is that the main question is that if I talk about the IELTS speaking that time. Our curious mind will want to know that is what is IELTS speaking? Actually, what oh, we can that's do very do magnificent, that? very yes. magnificent, sir. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, so the thing is that uh, if I talk about the IELTS speaking, that time uh, we may face lots of difficulties or lots of trouble, some situation. Mm -hmm. um, uh, like if I talk, uh, that is you have to follow the rules of IELTS speaking, or you have to follow the uh, regulations or restrictions. That Hello. kind of thing. That time, any students uh, will say that how can I do this kind of thing or how can I manage everything? So in that case, I would say I would like to say that IELTS speaking. If you think that yes, IELTS speaking is a uh, harder thing for me, or I can uh, I can achieve a good score or like when six point five or seven in IELTS, that time uh, I would like to say that is it's totally wrong. It's completely yeah. wrong. And today we are. Um, going to make you believe that yes, if you want, you can. If you want, you can. But if you don't want to achieve 7 or 7.5, we will not be able to give you the band score from our academy or from British Council. Okay. So now I would like to uh, start about my speech, about uh, speaking actually. So all of you know one thing that is our speaking exam is divided into three parts. All of you know that, that, uh, that thing. Um, 
in the speaking exam, we have to um, follow some parts, follow some portions actually, like part one, part two, and part three. So if I want to talk about the part one, uh, in the part one, uh, you may face some very basic questions, a very general questions about yourself, uh, your likes, your dislikes, your free time activities, your aim in life, or many more, many more questions are available, like uh, what you would like to do in your future, or uh, like, do you like to use computer? Do you like to uh, ride bicycle? Do you like to um, travel? That kind of questions you may face in the speaking part one. Uh, in your exam in examination hall okay so in the part one the examiner will ask you some very general questions okay so i missed one thing that is before starting the exam the examiner will tell you the overall process and the overall um, procedures or speaking exam overall procedures of speaking exam that how he will conduct or how he or she will conduct the speaking exam or how he or she will are going to help you or going to guide you in the whole session. So you don't need to be worried because he or she will be absolutely experienced and they will help you a lot. So you don't need to be worried because they are always with you and they are not like any tiger or lion. Okay, they are like us human beings. Okay, that's very interesting. Uh -huh. yes. Thank you, sir. So yes. you have to you have to bear in mind that they are like us. They are like us. Okay. And uh, you have to do lots of practice before uh, sitting in the examination hall or before uh, and speaking test. Okay. So that you can feel uh, or you may feel like uh, your teacher or where you practiced like your um, uh, mentor or your own teacher is uh, taking your IELTS exam or taking your speaking test. Okay. So you don't need to think that uh, he is from British Council or IDP. Oh my God, what should I say or what I will do? Okay. You don't need to be worried or you don't need to be afraid over there. After That's a very ridiculous question, sir. I have ever found from students. So what can I do for what is the best candidates and best examiner centers, British Council or IDP? That's a ridiculous question I have ever found from students. Okay, let's continue your talking. I am agree with you. I am agree with you completely. Actually, I want to share my one personal uh, experience. Like mm. when I was, uh, as far as uh, I remember, as far as I'm concerned, that is, uh, maybe it was 2018. It was 2018. One of my teachers, one of my IELTS mentor, actually, he told me that, uh, show me when you will sit in front of your examiner. When you will sit in front of your examiner, just you have to think that I am taking your speaking test. I am sitting in front of you. I am asking you the questions. Okay. And I practiced more than two or three times with him. And he... Um, Definitely, he, got, he helped me a lot, and I'm truly grateful to him. I'm truly grateful to him for his assistance, and um, I can, um, I, I am, what should I say? Actually, I'm not able to, I can't thank, thank him enough. Okay, that is the thing, actually. Uh, so, without making uh, any delay or without doing delay, I would like to uh, talk about the part one. In the part one, you may face some very general or basic questions, as I said earlier. So you don't need to be worried after facing the question or uh, after getting the question, you have to be cool there and you have to be positive there. Okay. You don't need to be um, worried and you don't need to think that, uh, oh my God, what should I say? Or um, am I going right or wrong? This kind of thing. Okay. So according to the questions, you have to deliver your answer. According to the question, you have to deliver your answer. Suppose I am asking you, what do you like to do in your free time? Okay. What do you like to do in your free time? That means your hobby. Definitely, I'm asking about your hobby. So um, for this question, if you're going to say, or if you uh, want to answer like, what you would like to do in your future, that will be totally ridiculous. And that will be, uh, what should I say? Totally irrelevant as well, because you have to realize that the question first. You have to realize of the realize the question first. Without realizing the question, if you want to deliver your answer, and if you go uh, irrelevant, that time you will not be able to get a good score in your IELTS exam. Okay, yeah, sir, I'm not saying for the part one. Yes, okay, sir. Uh, before we are going to the speaking part two, then we'll take some comment from our Facebook page. Okay. okay. So okay. Uh, lots of the students there are commenting there. Okay, Mr. Wafikul Al Rafi. 
He said there, Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum assalam. Could you please tell us some tips and tricks to get seven band in speaking? What do we need to do to get this band? Okay, Mr. Wa Wafi Al Rafi. Okay, stay connected till the end. Then we'll share so many effective tips which one will get you band seven or above in your real IELTS exam. Okay, so please keep patience and waiting for the end. And Mr. Chaudhary Jamil, okay, okay, sir, uh, today your class will be uh, pushed for maybe, not sure, but I'm just uh, know you in your WhatsApp group. Okay, Mr. Mahbub Rahman, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, Mr. Mahbub Rahman. Rahat Hussain Bappi, hello, sir. Hi, Mr. Bappi. Uh, so, many, uh, so many days later, so I'll just see you on virtual life. Okay, Mr. Alamin Buya, hello, sir. Hi, uh, hi, Mr. Alamin. Okay. Uh, Mr. Fahim Thanukhtar, hello, sir, and Johnny Ahmed, sir, should head air, uh, okay. Okay, Mr. Johnny Ahmed, we just uh, give your answers uh, at the uh, end of our speaking sessions and stay connected with us if you find your answer correctly and effectively. Thank you very much. Okay, sir, let's continue. Okay, uh, so I was talking about the IELTS speaking part one, actually. So if I want to talk about the IELTS speaking part one in that section, um, as I said earlier, you have to provide your answer according to the question. Okay, you have to provide your answer according to the questions. Uh, like if you, uh, if you face or if the examiner asks you, uh, what is your name? So in that case, if you don't tell your name, it will not in the relevant, okay? It will not be relevant over there. And uh, try to understand the question and according to the question, you have to provide the answer. I believe that you are understanding my uh, point of view. I want to say that is in the part one, you may face total eight to 10 questions and uh, the overall conversation or overall part one uh, will be conducted uh, like, and it will take four to five minutes. Your part one will take four to five minutes and within four to five minutes, the examiner may ask you eight to 10 questions. And you have to answer uh, according to the questions and your answer should be well organized. Okay, your answer should be well organized. All of we know one thing that is, uh, there are some uh, clear differences. There are some clear differences between part one and part three. Personally, I faced a lot of time, um, uh, maximum times I uh, faced one thing that is, many students, they are uh, used to um, provide their answer in the part one, like they are saying, eight to 10 sentences. Don't need to make it, uh, don't need to make it so long. Okay, you don't need to make it your answer so long because in the part one, as I said earlier, it's totally a basic or general discussion. Okay, basic or general knowledge based discussion. So in that case, you you have to be, um, what should I say? Keep you short. To, yes, you have to provide the short answer there and you don't need to make it so long because you have the details discussion part and of where you will get enough time to um doing the discussion with the exam okay. yes as so far as as far as i'm concerned in uh i'll just writing oh uh, i'll just part one is speaking part one so in part ones you have to make three or four sentences for supporting your answers in speaking test only part one so first of all when examiner asks you any questions first time then you should answer directly and after this, you make two or three reasons for supporting your part one questions. And I think this will better for getting a good score in IELTS writing part one. And another things I just mentioned there is in writing, uh, in sorry, in speaking part one, this a warm up matches like a warm up match before yes. going to the main test. Okay. And in this part one, they will ask you only basic questions, like the general questions. Examiner often asks you, hi, I would like to ask you some general questions about yourself. Okay, so general questions always the easiest way to express your answers with a cohesively and efficiently. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. I just wanted to say that kind of things like in the part one, you don't need to make it so long. Just try to finish your answer within three to four sentences. Or if it is, uh, if you want to make long, then highest five sentences. Don't need to make it so long. Okay. Thank you, sure. sir, uh, for providing the information. And that's all about part one, I think. And uh, I, I, okay, I don't think. Yes. Uh, yes. I, I understood your uh, whole topic and whole answers about uh, part one.
and now i'd like to ask about something something to say about our speaking part two yeah in speaking uh, part two in speaking part two we uh, generally call it uh, cue card yes so uh, the cue card is says uh, mainly uh, bangladesh indian and pakistani students but originally it's called the test card yes okay yes. so can you please uh, share something about i'll uh, i'll speaking part two how can we overcome this situation okay so as i said before starting my discussion that is your speaking exam will be divided or your speaking exam is divided into three parts part 1 part 2 and part 3 so after finishing the part 1 sequentially obviously part 2 isn't it after finishing the part 1 you have to perform or you have to um, finish the part 2 then you will go to the part 3 okay so if i uh, talk about if i want to talk about the part 2 that i uh, um i must say one thing that is uh, just um our teacher uh, shared with us that is it's q uh, it's not q card it actually it's internationally called like test card okay so in our part 2 uh, in the part 2 of ielts speaking you will get a test card or q card there you will uh, get a q card and uh, in the q card you will um, get a specific question okay you will get a specific question like uh if i want to talk about our uh, school life or our college life okay the time we um uh, we we read lots of paragraphs lots of compositions isn't it so if i talk about the paragraphs that time like uh if i talk about like school magazine okay in the examination hall or when we are practicing that time we are reading about school magazine so after the question after the heading of like school magazine after the uh, heading of school magazine that you will find some question which will be related to your heading or which will be re uh, related to your um, school magazine topic okay like what is school magazine how do you know about it and uh, uh, where we can find this kind of school magazine do you think that school magazine in the magazine is important for us so that type of questions you may face in the speaking exam as well like uh, if i want to talk about a q card or test card topic like um, a test card to uh, topic can be describe about a what should i say describe about a describe an int uh, yes describe, describe a pet like this like okay describe okay. about a math lesson or describe about a teacher whom you know or describe okay. about a teacher who is very interesting okay so it will be your topic and uh, according to the topic you may get three to four questions yes uh, as we know that generally uh, students get uh, four questions according to the uh, topic or cue card okay so the question like uh, who is he or she how do you know him or her or uh, why do you like or dislike him or her and uh, do you think that a teacher is a builder of a nation that type of question you may face in your uh, of ielts speaking exam in the part 2 actually in the part 2 of ielts speaking so now i would like to say about the answering process after getting the cue card okay i want to share my personal opinion that is um part 3 or i i saw many students after getting the cue card topic um they started to think oh my god what is my cue card topic so will i be able to perform will i be able to talk uh, like two minutes what should i do what should i do now so uh, am i able to get band 7 or am i able to get band 8 you don't need to think this kind of thing dear viewers you don't need to think this kind of thing just try to utilize your one minute because after getting the cue card or after getting the test card topic you will get only one minute for taking some notes after uh, getting the cue card topic you will get only one minute for taking some notes so in the preparation time or after getting the one minute without taking the notes if you started to think will i be able to say or what should i do what, oh, oh my oh, god what should i do okay so many students did the same thing without taking notes they are ready to explore or to deliver their speech in the main examinations it's totally a wrong idea okay so dear students we have a request to you please don't go overthrow without taking any kind of notes you should always take the notes for only one minute within one minute you have to take the best possible notes making because on the speaking during the speaking times you have to mention all of the four questions here if you miss the one questions that is okay 
but if you miss the two or three uh, two or three questions then it is always affect your score then examiner will give you a low score and you receive a lower score okay so always keep in mind that you take a note within one minute and after this when you just start your conversations in i'll just cue card speaking cue cards then you have to mention all of the notes what you write there okay that's a good idea to get a good band score in your speaking part cue card and another things i mentioned uh, there are two students uh, those who are just watching our live session today because uh, writing uh, uh, sorry speaking part 1 in this part 1 uh, they don't bother about your fluency coherence your grammatical accuracy uh, your pronunciations that are uh, that don't bother us in this matter but when it comes to the speaking part 2 then examiners will accurately gives you the idea what's about your idea what's about your sentence makings are you related into the uh, tenses conditions like you are using present or past or at the same time you are using the future times or you are just out of the topic or going to the irrelevant section these times examiners will overcome in your suggestions in this matter so try to a good and so effectively note making is always crucial for your uh, writing uh, speaking part two and uh, i'm just received a questions here uh, from our uh, facebook session mr rahad hussein babbi he questioned us is accent is accent is crucial in order to score higher band okay accent is one kind of criteria for getting a good score in ielts speaking so first of all pronunciation and that means is accent okay so if you have Bang uh, bangladeshi uh, accents that uh, it doesn't matter if you have chinese accent or if you have uh, even if you have native speaking style that uh, it doesn't matter the matter is that you are using the right method suppose one kind of examples i'll give you uh, either either and either either is called by british and either is called by american so american is one kind of accents and british have another kind of accents so you are using british or either american that it does not matter matter is also you are use it correctly and so far i can remember that accent is uh, accent does not matter because it never influence your score but what influence your score it's mainly is fluency and coherence what we discuss later in the speaking uh, 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 today's discussion and after this it also affects your lexical resource what mean is that vocabulary and lastly your grammatical accuracy if you if you are not uh, related in the grammatical accuracy uh, like that say, your topic is uh, have to say about the past situation but when you just speaking on the part 2 and you have found their present situation you are just organizing your answer with the present tenses but your cricket say about the past tenses so what will be happens you are going into the wrong way and whatever you want to say in this parts you are just going to the wrong method then students will receive the lower score in these situations i think mr radhusan bappi you will be uh, you have found your answers what i said now so please keep in mind that accent is not a good way because in chinese students or japanese students they never use or access r or l for me, when any kinds of any Chinese students when say Bangladesh, they are not using Bangladesh, they are using Bangladesh. Okay, LS sound is uh, totally silenced in the Chinese language. So accent does not matter or affects in our speaking test. Thank you. Okay, sir. Let's continue part three. Okay. We are going to part uh, three. Okay. Uh, we will go part three. Um, so uh, before uh, going to part three. Uh, I would like to provide you another information about part two. That is, try to make the um, make the what should I say? Try to follow the sequence actually. Okay, try to follow the sequence according to the um, question. Like um, all of we read or all of we know that one, two, three, four, not two, three, four, one, isn't it? So we have to follow the sequence at first. Um, following the sequence, like uh, you have to provide the answer of the first question, then second, then third, then fourth. Okay. That kind of things you uh, you must follow in your speaking exam. So that's all about part two. Another thing is that uh, try to uh, do lots of practice because uh, in the uh, speaking exam or when you will uh, sit for uh, for your speaking exam that time, you have to be that much confident. Okay, you have to be so confident. Without 
um, confidence you will not be able to provide your uh, good or provide your best effort over there. So confidence is a, what should I say? Confidence is a good thing or confidence is um, must important, most important for your uh, speaking test and it's must. Okay, so that's all about my uh, part two. And so now I would like to um, de describe about the part three. Uh, so in the part three, you will get some questions like it can be four to six questions you may face in the part three and these questions will will be related to your part two but here i used but because in the examination hall you don't need to think and you don't need to be sure that um, you are getting totally four to six questions which will be related to your pure topic sometimes some question will not be related to your QCAT topic. Okay, suppose uh, after finishing the QCAT topic, the examiner will ask you one or two questions which may uh, or which will be related to your QCAT topic. And after finishing these one or two questions, they may ask you uh, some question um, which will not be related to your QCAT or test card topic. But before asking, they will uh, tell you like, uh, now I would like to um, ask you some questions about technology but your topic was about like a math lesson. Okay, math lesson or uh, your topic was like a teacher, but he will, uh, he wants to ask you some questions about science or technology or nature or any kind of animal, okay. So before asking this kind of question, he will definitely say you, that is uh, now I would like to ask you some questions about technology or let's talk about technology. Let's discuss about science. Let's talk about animal. So these are actually, um, about part three, it, this kind of questions or these are the uh, main criteria of part three. So uh, but you have to provide the logical information and the, uh, you have to provide the answers according to the questions. Uh, I am saying it again and again because the, what should I say, the, according to the question, you have to, must provide your answer, okay? Because I am asking you one question. I am asking you like, uh, what do you want to do in your future? But without saying this kind of thing, you are saying totally irrelevant or which are not relevant with your question. That time, uh, the, uh, you, uh, your score will be uh, like, you you don't get seven or 6.5 or you will, uh, what should I say? In that case, your uh, uh, speaking score will be hampered automatically, okay? Because the examiner will not find the um, sequence or uh, they, they will not get the proper answers from your self, from the question actually. So that is why uh, you have to be sequential and you have to follow the sequence according to the question. Okay, sir. Sir, I want to add something about uh, uh, speaking part three. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sure. But speaking part three, there are some things else like that students can use there. First one is analyze, compare and contrast, compare the student's experience with the experience of other people compare the past with the present or future. And the uh, second thing is describe. And the last thing is discuss advantages and disadvantages like cost and benefits. Okay, so <clears throat> broadly I can say that there are five categories in part three speaking. So number one, describe. Number two, advantage and disadvantages. Number three, opinion. And number four, speculate and number five, compare. So first of all, I just say about the describe things, okay. So in describe situations, questions that require a candidate to describe are generally the easiest ones in part three. So examiners usually ask them at the beginning of the section of the speaking module, candidates should try to provide answer that describe different situations or group of people. For example, uh, if a candidate is asked to describe the kind of music that people in her country like, his or her country like, it's a good idea to consider the kinds of music that different groups of people like teenagers and the elderly. And the second thing is what I mentioned earlier, advantages and disadvantages questions for speaking part three. Candidates are frequently asked about advantages and disadvantages of certain things. Candidates should be aware that examiners can change the words, advantages and disadvantages to costs and benefits or pros and cons. Candidates should also use these words since they demonstrate a wider range of vocabulary. Beware that examiner may also ask only about the advantages 
benefits, pros, or only about the disadvantages, cause or cons. But you have to remember this. What's what kind of questions you receive from the examiner? But candidates can still provide both in their answers. It also a good idea to point out whether these advantages and disadvantages are big or small, major or minor. Useful words and phrases include the main advantages and the major disadvantages. Now, number three is opinion. Almost all candidates are asked to express an opinion at some point during part three. Uh, remember that opinions are not facts. They are what you think, but something that other people might disagree with. However, your opinion should have some factual basis, support and reasoning. Be careful when answering questions that begin. Everything is very important. Okay, that is repetitious and reduces the impact of the answer. Try using other adverbs or degree and phrases such as somewhat, quite, fairly, moderately, not very, uh, I think, not important as something like this. You are using there when you have found any kind of opinion sections in part three. And number four is speculate. The verb, I think the verb speculate means to think about future possibilities, future possibilities. What will happen in the futures? Some kinds of questions you are receiving in its IELTS speaking part three. Be wary of using will, since will suggest that something is certain. Try to use other words such as can, could, might, and may, which indicate that the future situation is not certain. Okay, like that, I would like to, hope to, aim to, and wish to. This allows you to express your exact meaning and demonstrate a wider range of vocabulary. If you do use well in your speech, perhaps accidentally, you can add probably or possibly immediately afterwards to change the meaning. And number five is compare. Okay, so compare candidates are frequently Candidates are frequently compared in part three of the speaking model. There are two types of comparison that are particularly common. The first is to compare groups of people, men and women, young people and older people, children and adults. Candidates will only be asked to compare people from their country and foreign people if they have said that they have lived or traveled abroad or know some foreigner well. Okay, that's all thing I think is the comparing situations. Examiners will always give you the chance to comparing from another person to other person, from another country to other country, from past to present, from past to future, from present past to futures. There are a lot of variety of questions available in part three. So keep in mind this, which kinds of questions you receive. If it is a compare based, then you just give your comparing. If it is opinion based, then you have to make their opinion questions there. Okay, sir. Okay, that's all thing I just want to add in speaking part three. Uh, and I want to uh, I want to give some explanation about sir uh, speaking marking criteria. Okay, can you please tell me about speaking my marking criteria four things? Okay, uh, so in your speaking example, uh, the speaking uh, marking criteria actually. Uh, they will judge you, um, they will uh, actually see your pronunciation, okay, your pronunciation style, and they will see your um, vocabulary or lexical resource, and thirdly, they will, uh, they will see like your grammatical accuracy, okay, grammatical accuracy, how you are um, actually saying, uh, they will um, judge about your sentence making and uh, how you are, uh, how you are, operating all the things very fluently, that's that kind of things. And last one is, that is, they will, uh, I want to say one thing that is cohesion and cohesion, okay. Okay, sir. I want to add something about uh, fluency and coherence. The first marine criteria of uh, speaking part one, when examiner will give you the mark you have received in your main IELTS speaking test. Okay, first of first the problems I got uh, from my students when they are sitting in the mock test or in the main exams, they literally to stop their uh, thinking like they're posing too often. In the first thing, I have found them posing too often. Posing can be a good thing, 
it can be the speaker time to consider their next words it can give the listener time to consider what the speaker is saying however many candidates are guilty of posing too often okay so often this is because they are nervous or because they need to recall simple vocabulary particularly poor candidates pose every few words or even in the middle of words this even happens when the candidates are discussing very familiar topics such as their families hobbies and jobs your speech should be fairly fluent smooth and poses should usually be between sentences or clauses so too much often posing uh, oh, uh, oh that means it really affects your uh, score and the second thing is repetition the fluency and coherence always uh, marking criteria is repetition so many times students use the same things often open over and over again okay so candidates often appear to stumble through sentences saying a few words then repeating those same words with an additional few words staged on the end the next sentence is sometimes simply rewarding of the past an example i would be just remember that my family one of my students when he just sat down for the mock test so i just asked uh, him a questions like that about family then my family is big family my family is very gentle family my family has three person my family is four persons there are three people of my family 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 so many times they are using the family 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 so what will be happen in your marking criteria examiner just cut down your mark why because you are using too much time same thing again and again and number 3 is self correction uh, many candidates are more worried about their accuracy than their fluency this is understandable but ielts candidate should be informed that while both accuracy and fluency are obviously important a certain lack of accuracy is tolerable okay so even the higher band levels however a lack of fluency is not tolerable to the same extent self correction does not show the examiner that you are aware of having made a mistake and maybe a good idea when the mistake is very obvious or intrusive uh, such as um, makes a candidate difficult to understand or changes the meaning of what the candidate says however if you conditionally correct yourself it breaks a fluency in extreme cases the examiner might forget the beginning of the sentence before you get to the end of it and you so might oh you saw okay so there's the things i have found from my students and another uh, thing is really so important about fluency and coherence section speaking too quickly too quickly because like that i am a native speaker i am fabricated that i am a native speaker so i am i just want to talk too quickly too quickly so what will be happens when you just speaking too quickly some candidate confuse fluency and speed they think they are the same thing the result is that they speak too fast possibly faster than most native english speakers this can cause two problems first the examiner may not have time to understand what the candidate is saying particularly when the candidate makes grammatical errors using inappropriate vocabulary and here he or she problems with the pronunciation the second problem is that examiner may ask why the candidate is speaking so quickly candidates often do this to impress people even though their actual ability is quite poor <laughs> i think uh, you got it sir okay uh, now i just uh, talk about the illogical answers in our speaking part 2 or part 3 candidates very often indicate that they have memorized answers or simply not considered their responses carefully and have thrown illogical answers here is an example in part 1 the examiner could ask what do you do in your free time the candidate may answer i go window shopping and surf the internet then the examiner might ask why do you like window shopping the same candidate may say i have too much homework and never have any free time to go window shopping in the second answer the candidate has contradict the information they gave in the first answer the answer indicate that the candidate does not really know what she or he is saying often answer are made illogical because the candidates incorrectly add or omit negatives so avoid negativity things in the illogical answers okay and many students they are going through the uh, illogical answers in part 3 especially or part 2 part 2 sometimes happen but part 3 lots of times they are happening the same same error again and again 
Okay, so uh, now we are uh, just uh, say something about, uh, uh, can you say something about the vocabulary in the speaking section? Okay, uh, if I want to talk about the vocabulary section or the lexical resource, that time I would like to suggest or I, uh, I prefer that is when you will speak, okay. When you will speak in front of others. So suppose in the speaking exam hall, obviously you have to speak or you have to uh, talk in front of the examiner, okay. So try to represent yourself in an exceptional way, okay. Suppose uh, we are uh, used to, we are used to use like important, okay. So important is very common one and important is very uh, similar and it's very, what should I say? Very common, okay, important is very common. So without using important, why you are not using like significant, crucial, okay. This kind of thing, uh, so try to be exceptional and try to do something exceptional thing, okay. So it will uh, help you a lot. And this kind of thing I should uh, um, prefer and I, I would like to uh, say. And another thing is that uh, you may, or you can ask some, uh, you can add some uh, phrases as well, okay. You can add some uh, general phrases as well and it will help you a lot and these phrases help you a lot to get a good score in your speaking exam. So that's all about uh, vocabulary. It's a nice answer, sir, I have received from you. And I want to add something about the vocabulary yeah, problem yeah, sure. in IELTS speaking. Uh, today is our section is IELTS speaking, not the writing section, okay. So vocabulary is much more important for all four modules in IELTS test. Okay, so dear students, we always put so many vocabulary in our Facebook page every day at eight o'clock. So you can read theirs and inshallah you will get the vocabulary what is the what appears in our IELTS exam. Okay, so now vocabulary problems in IELTS speaking test. Uh, I think the first one is overuse of certain words. Overuse of certain words. You know certain words and you are using over and over again in your speaking. So many candidates overuse certain words and phrases, in particular connective such as and, also, and, but, and discourse markers such as right, of course. And as you know, overuse of vocabulary also extends to words such as like, even an adverse candidate should be able to replace like with other suitable words such as love and injure. So another things I have found is misuse of certain words, misuse, misuse. The misuse of word is another problem. Of course, is often is used by native speakers prior to standing something that is generally known or accepted. A 25 year old woman who says, of course, I'm married, is using the phrases inappropriately as it is certainly possible for a woman of the age to be single. Okay, 25 years, that means uh, too much age. So in this time, she get married. Okay, we believe it. Many candidates say things like absorbed in her kindness and reliability, enlarge your eyesight, test the experience, touch new things and touch the culture, which sound very poetic, but sound nonsensical in every spoken English or speaking English. Okay, sir. So, sir, uh, uh, can you go through the another sections like that grammatical range and accuracy? Can you say something about grammatical range and accuracy? What is the very important, but not very important in speaking session? This session is very important for our writing sections. Okay. Yes. So, can you say something about a little bit about grammatical range and accuracy, sir? Okay. Uh, so, if I want to talk about the grammar section or grammatical accuracy section, so I must say one thing that is, if you are not able to complete a sentence or if any examiner or if any teacher, if, if a teacher actually don't get the proper, uh, if a teacher uh, doesn't get any uh, uh, proper meaning from your sentences, okay, from your sentences, then how he or she will be able to realize that what you are going to say or what you were saying, okay. So in that case, um, first of all, if I want to talk about the grammar, um, tense is very important and I will not say that is tense is very important for IELTS or IELTS speaking. Okay, I, I am saying that tense is very important. There are some specific reasons. Sometimes our cue card is related to present tense. Sometimes our cue card is related to past tense. It can be in future tense. Okay, so without following the uh, demands of your question. Okay, suppose your question uh, uh, wants to talk about your question, wants to talk about your future, but you are talking about past. 
that time you were not in the uh, what should I say not in the proper way okay so how I will be able to judge you or how the examiner will be able to judge you okay so in that case try to uh, be relevant or try to be uh, uh, quite straightforward according to your question and in the grammatical section actually if I talk about the only grammar section or grammatical accuracy section that time uh, I would say that if your grammar is not not so good and if your grammar is not correct okay that time you have another three options like fluency uh, uh, like uh, what should I say cohesive and co cohesion like fluency and pronunciation lexical resource three portions are available uh, besides your grammatical accuracy or grammar section okay so if I uh, divide 100 okay if I divide 100 uh, by 4 okay that time the answer will be 25 okay so like um, your if I talk about the grammatical accuracy or grammar, your 25% is not correct or you are not so um, able or you are not so proficient in grammar section. So you are doing lots of grammatical mistake. That time your 25% marks will be deducted. Okay, but it will be- Sir, uh, another uh, things I have found from grammatical range and accuracy, many yes. candidates are guilty of not using a range of tenses and grammatical structures. <laughs> they, they feel guilty why this has happened. So this often relates to a lack of developed answers rather than a lack of knowledge of grammatical structures. Some candidates are under the impression that if they simply answer the questions correctly, they will get a high bench score. This impression is incorrect and misses the whole point of the examination, which is to access the candidate's level of English and ability to express him or herself in English. Candidates should take every opportunity to use various tenses and structures rather than repeating the same structure again and again in different answers. Okay, so the criteria refer to simple and complex sentence structures. In both the IELTS speaking, uh, also writing modules, mo most important there, simple structures are those that use a single structure in a single sentence. Uh, suppose one kind of example, one example is like that, she uh, likes dogs. I went shopping yesterday and they will visit the Jew tomorrow. These kinds of sentences are simple here. So complex structure are those that use more than one structure in a single sentences or that use clauses in sentences. This can be done in different ways. For example, by creating conditional sentences, if I own a million do dollars, I would buy a big house. Okay, that's a conditional a sentence like that. You can use the conditional tenses in your uh, speaking section there. Uh, clauses like that, that, which, where, so that, when, oh, she is a girl who owned a million dollars or she is a boy who owned a million dollars. Okay, that's the complex and the structure there you can use in your speaking section. Okay, that is the hotel where we stayed on holiday last year. So it's a completely complex sentence here. And sentences that show two actions happening at the same time. I watched TV whilst my husband was cooking dinner or something like that. That's totally a complex sentence there. So uh, I think uh, making more and more complex sentences will give you a good impressions and can have a good score in your IELTS exams, what you really need. Okay, sir, uh, we, we have to receive uh, some, of the uh, some of the questions answers from our uh, Facebook area so uh, students uh, uh question there so our our aim to answer them okay so okay sir. Uh, uh, mr so okay okay i, I also just wanted to ask you some questions okay, i also sir. wanted okay, to sir. ask you some questions yes sir okay I, I i'll give you i'll give you a minute letters oh, one of our stu uh, one students uh, commented there could or would air before please sir okay so uses of could or would could that means possibility? 50 50 persons, if you are sharing something is 50 50 percent, then you should use their could. And would, would also mean the possibility of the future. Okay, possibility that means in the future. In the future, something is happen. Some things will be happen. So in this time, you use their would. Okay. And some things is 50 50 percent. Okay, 50 is happening or 50 does not happening. So in these times, you just use their could. And would only the future possibility. In your speaking sections, if something is referred to the future possibility, then you should use their would. And something is the 50-50% possibility, uh, not sure or not true or not false, then you should use their could.
good okay i uh, i think you just got it your answers okay and show, uh, model verb is uh, really so influential to get a good score in our it speaking test okay thank you mr md jaman okay mirza tahir okay uh, okay uh, mr joni ahmed question there uh, commented there sir should had uh, uses of should had in speaking okay mr joni ahmed uh, we have found the should have actually not should had okay should had you never use the should had in our uh, speaking sections because we can use their should have and should have bengali means is uchit chilo and should have in the english to english meaning is that uh, some things you would like to happens in the past time okay some things happen in the past situation and but the present situation you understand that is the right okay that means i am just covering a room okay uh, uh, there is a fan in front, uh, just above uh, my head okay there is a fan okay if there is no fan then i when i enter the rooms i just say the room should have a fan because uh, the weather is a uh, very hot it's a boiling day you can say that but if there is no fan what will be happens the speakers or students are waiting more and more and sweating here okay so we just say there should have a fan there i think you just got received your questions mr joni ahmed thank you very much for your question okay sir uh, can you tell me something about the questions received from okay, some okay thank you sir thank you thank you for providing me this precious opportunity uh, actually i would like to ask you some questions and these questions most of the time uh, we received from our students when uh, we conducted any mock test or uh, when we conducted some speaking tests okay that time uh, sure please or i co uh, collected actually these types of questions and most of the time we are used to get this kind of questions uh, i hope that you will uh, you are also familiar with that questions so should i ask sure sir okay. inshallah so, i'll understand it as soon as possible <laughs> okay. thank you sir uh, my okay. first question is that um can i make notes during the speaking test uh well you can take notes only during part 2 of the speaking test when you are preparing your speech remember that students are not permitted to take notes away after any part of the test so you can make notes only part 2 because examiner will give you only one minute for preparing yourselves and they always provide you a pencil a short notebooks providing your notes and just write down there thank you okay sir thanks a lot my another question is that are all examiners trained in the same way mm, i think there's uh, uh, difficult questions uh, yes this is necessary to uh, ensure that students receive fair scores whether it will be idp or british council it does not bother okay wherever you are you get the right score examiners are constantly assessed to ensure that they are giving scores to the required standard and conducting the test in the manner prescribed by the test creators becoming an examiner requires a teaching qualification and several years of teaching experience examiner must also pass training course how fast do examiners speak during the speaking module at about the same speed as a native speaker english teacher during a class so all examiners train sometimes the same way thank you sir thank you sir thank you uh, my third question is that how should i begin and end the interview like speaking test mm -hmm. at the beginning simply greet the examiner with hello good morning not hello okay not is thumb based <laughs> okay so just is hello with a smiley or uh, good morning or good afternoons it always depends on the time if you are using in the morning time then you just use their good morning you are going they are in the examination hall afternoon time then you should use their afternoon okay the examiner will guide you through the test at the end of simply say thank you goodbye then leave the room in particular avoid poetic phrases such as it has been a great pleasure and honor to have such a wonderful and lovely discussion with you i think uh, this kind of sentences is uh, really so impressive you just use in with your examiner at the last moment when your exam will stop there okay 
I think these phrases, I just all, uh, again uh, call you to our students. It has been a great pleasure and honor to have such a wonderful and lovely discussion with you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, so I am asking you questions again and again. Okay. Uh, my another question is that are body languages and eye conduct important during the test? Okay, so body language that means uh, gesture of moving and your total body is languaging and eye contact that means your eye to the examiner eye. Okay, so that's the thing I just recall my exam day. What happened with the exam? Okay, okay, I just uh, I just remembered that day, but now I remember it. No, no, actually body language and eye contact does not too important. Examiners are trained to ignore body language and yet eye contact. Since they often have a cultural basis and do not reflect spoken English ability, remember that the interview is recorded and that any examiner listening to the recording, for example, if a candidate asks for his or her score to be checked, to be checked, will not be able to see the candidate's body language. Just listen his or her audio what he did in the examination day or level of eye contact. Okay, so eye contact and body gesture because you are moving again and again, again your body, that's really ridiculous. And this is uh, seems to be really awkward. Okay, so why you are moving again and again? And eye contact, that does means your eye and examiner eye at the same the point. Okay, so if you uh, just uh, sitting there and you just uh, uh, knock down your head, just knock down your head in the uh, 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 pillow point. So what will be happened? Examiners will always shout you and you also a uh, little bit LOR is good there. Okay, so try to uh, give, maintain a good eye contact with your teacher. Okay, but otherwise it does not mention if you don't uh, bother your eye contacts, then it will not happen to your school. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. I expect that our students and our viewers uh, who are watching us, they got so many ideas from your uh, valuable explanations. So, however, I would like to ask you another question that is, can I ask the examiner questions during the test to get a real conversation going between us? Mm, theoretically, candidates ask examiners anything they like, but the examiner will probably not answer or at least not answer in more than a few words as it wastes time. Examiner will certainly answer questions which ask him or her to repeat or rephrase questions. In part one, the examiner cannot change the wording of the questions in any way, so only ask the examiner to repeat them. Suppose like, sir, I just forgot what my examiner said there. Okay. I just asked them, uh, I'm afraid. Could you repeat the question, please? Or during the, at the some point of uh, conversation times, I just forget about the part three questions. And there are uh, difficult vocabulary I have found there. So what will be happens? You just say, I am afraid. Could you paraphrase the questions about the something like this? You does not know. Just you say, could you paraphrase the questions in easiest way? Then examiner will paraphrase you. However, in part three, the examiner can change the question wording. So asking the examiner to rephrase might be preferable. Do not ask the examiner questions like, do you know <laughs> or have you heard of? Never ask any question to examiner as this waste time and do not contribute to your school. Okay, sir. Okay, so I would like to ask you, what should I say? It's not ridiculous actually, but it's very, I'm very excited to ask you this question. Okay, maximum time I faced these questions and um, this question is like that, what kind of clothes or what clothes should I wear to the examination? <laughs> okay, uh, that's an interesting question. <laughs> okay, sir. Uh, I think wear clean clothes that you feel comfortable in. The examiner and your school will not be influenced by your appearance. Okay. But you will perform better if you feel that you are tidy and reasonably dressed. Okay. You can go there with uh, casual dresses like informal way. You can go there. They are never influenced your any school. Or you can uh, uh, go there with fully formals. That will also be very good. Okay. 
So never ever will be happen something about your clothes, sir. Okay, hopefully you got it. Thank you, sir. And uh, I would like to add another information that is, so far I know that is, uh, there is no actually dress code criteria. That is, you have to follow uh, this kind of criteria or you have to follow this kind of dress code. Maybe it's yes, not yes. necessary. Okay. You can, you can just uh, um, choose or you can just uh, uh, wear whatever you want, isn't it? But you have to go there. Uh, you have to be polite as well. Okay. You have to be polite. Sure. Okay. Uh, so my another question is that what is the most difficult part of the IELTS test? Difficult part of the IELTS test? Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. So it's, uh, I think it's a student based questions. Okay. Students yes. preferences there. Okay. Students so many times asked uh, these kinds of questions like that. What's the difficult part of the module, difficult part of the IELTS test. Okay. Different candidates have different strengths and weakness, but generally students do not do as well on the active parts of the test. Speaking and writing compared to the passive parts of the test, reading and listening. Within the speaking module, most candidates report that they find part three, part three the most difficult, which is not surprising. Should I take an IELTS preparation course before taking the test? Something like this they are using. So I think part three is uh, sometimes is difficult for answering the questions. Okay, sir. So part three. Yeah. Okay. So my another question is that how many words should I know for the test? Well, it is possible to say exactly, but I know many candidates who achieved good school six plus, even though their vocabularies were not extensive. This is because they could use basic vocabulary accurately and flexibly. Other candidates claim to have larger vocabularies, but as they are unable to use them, they do not achieve the good discourse that they wish to attain. <clears throat> yes, sir, I think uh, there's all kinds of speaking tests. So if you grow your uh, vocabulary, then you will be better positions. If you just reduce your vocabulary, then how can you get the band 7 or 7.5 or even 8 or 9 in your speaking test? So creating more and more vocabulary and more and more words in your brain. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, you. Another thing is that sometimes many candidates, they shared with us, that is, um, when they are speaking in front of the examiner, that time sure. they, have, uh, they became, uh, what should I say, they are... Uh, they try to think or they started to think that whatever I am saying, is it right or um, is it wrong? Okay. So from this conception, they are uh, they asked me and I um, actually collected this question like, does it matter if I express an opinion that the examiner doesn't agree with? Uh, can you say same questions again, please? Okay. Does it matter if I express an opinion that the examiner does not agree with? Yes, it doesn't matter whether you agree or disagree with the examiner's personal viewpoint. The important things to remember are express yourself clearly, give your viewpoint some support, and be ready to defend your viewpoint. These three things are very important skill for university level studies and IELTS is basically a test of academic English skills. The examiner can't reduce your score because he or she disagrees with it. I know, you know, many people have different views. So you just express your views with the question. So nor can the examiner increase your score because he or she agrees with it. So it does not affect your any scores anytime. Yes. Thank you very much, sir. Um, my next question is that um, are short, simple sentences with no mistakes better than complex sentences with mistakes? Uh, as long as the complex sentences are clear in their meaning and mistakes are small, they are better than always using short, simple ones. Look at the band descriptors. I mean, what we just uh, explained today, band descriptor, they clearly state that in order to get a good grammar score, candidates must use a range of complex structure. During the test, you will have plenty of opportunity to demonstrate to the examiner that you can use short, simple sentences with high accuracy. 
take the opportunity to use complex structure as often as possible. The examiner will assess my English in the speak module on the basis of the criteria. Criteria. So what I am very good at one, uh, suppose vocabulary. I am very good at vocabulary, but very poor at another like grammar. <laughs> okay, so in such a case, your score will be somewhere between the high point and the low point, but you cannot predict exactly where. Okay, so as a result, the only strategy is to aim to be as good in each area as possible. This is the only way to be sure of maximizing your score. Okay. Thank sorry. you, sir. Uh, my other question is that, what should I do if the examiner asks me about a topic I am not familiar with? Wow, that's a great question, <laughs> sir. I have embarrassed from you. So I'm not familiar with, uh, suppose a, it's uh, many times happen in the cue card section. Okay. And uh, another time is happening with the part three sections frequently with the students. Okay. So look at the band descriptors. I, uh, my advice to look at the band descriptor for lexical resources printed in this book, because band descriptor is really very helpful and very crucial for getting your school is going to up, up and up, but you have never flowed the uh, band descriptors. I think you does not have a, you don't have any kinds of area and criteria what ever happened in your uh, school. So a candidate is expected to be able to deal with unfamiliar topics. If you can't do so, your school will be low. If you meet with a question, you honestly cannot formulate an answer for. All you can do is say what you can to try to provide an answer to the question. So then wait for the next one and hope that you are better able to answer that one, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, so I have another question and I'm saying that it's my last question actually. So which tenses should I use? So can you suggest something to our viewers? That who, uh, which, which tenses? tenses uh, uh, tenses? Okay, suggestion about the tenses using in the IELTS speaking. Okay, so there are a variety of uh, tenses available in your uh, speaking sections because uh, we just discussed about the speaking part two at the first moment of our today's discussion. Okay, so there, uh, there we just discussed so many things about I'll be speaking part two and part three. But when you have, when you get any kinds of cue cards like the present situations, then you should use their simple present tense. You can also use their present perfect tense and you can also use the present perfect continuous tense. The total things is happening with you relating to the answer on the question. After this, so many times students receive the past based questions. Okay, so what about their, uh, what about their error in the speaking sections, uh, choosing a tenses? Because you, you have found there's one kind of uh, questions like past tense, but the students uh, deliver their answer on the present basis uh questions okay so what will be happen there is uh examiner will detect your and uh, uh, score because you are just using theirs the uh, uh just using their uh, uh another kinds of tenses like theirs and another things i think use their modal verbs and modal verbs is really very crucial uh most most students do not use modal verbs at all or use them in a very limited manner when discussing the future students tend to use will which indicates a high degree of certainty. So never use the will. Okay, instead of will, you can also use their could. Try using a modal verb to demonstrate to the examiner that know the difference in meaning, should and ought to indicate that something is a good or idea or preferable. Could indicates what we just use their possibility. Might and may indicate is less of possibility, less, less possibility. So would indicates possibility or intention about the future. Uh, what I discussed the earlier, use plus modal plus have past participle to indicate what could have been done in the past to prevent a situation now. We could have explored the use of solar power, like that one kind of example. We, can, we could have explored the use of solar power earlier to prevent high pollution levels in the world today. Okay, another thing I just want to say about the passive tenses. Okay. Uh, these tenses is uh, really important for our both our writing and speaking. So recently many IELTS textbooks I saw their websites and teachers have been recommending that students use passive tenses as much as possible. 
This has resulted in many students using these tenses incorrectly. I'm being studied like that. I'm work at using passive tenses is good because it shows you you can use a range of tenses, but you must use them correctly, correctly, correctly. Okay, so this effects of an increased number of cars in uh, like that uh, uh, Dhaka is being studied at so many Chinese students. Many things were done to reduce traffic accidents last year. And the last thing is conditional sentence. The first conditional is used for possibly future actions. So which depend on the present of another future action. The conditional will probably be meet use if plus pattern simple will like that. So you can use their conditional sentences like that first conditional. Then you can use their if something is unreal situations, something is unimaginations, some things won't be happen in the future or past or present. Then you can use their second conditional or third conditional. So conditional is uh, really an influential grammatical range to demonstrate your power in the speaking section. So what I recommend you first of all, first time, first time I just recommend you modal verb. And the second time is passive tense. And the third is conditionals. I think you, if you have the skills about these tenses, inshallah, you will get a good score for what you really need in speaking. Okay, sir. But I don't have enough words to thank you. I'm oh, fully grateful oh, for your you. uh, nice explanation, actually. Um, I have uh, gathered so many knowledge about IELTS speaking. Thank you for your nice explanation. Oh, thank so, you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. So, your uh, answers is really so stunning. And say so it also teaches our students so many things and the, a good idea and overall idea in the speaking section. Okay, sir. And thank you, thank you uh, very much too. And can you give us some tips about how can we get a good school in IELTS speaking? Okay. So if anyone asks me, like uh, just you asked me that uh, about giving me about giving some tips or tricks about IELTS speaking. So if I want to talk about any tricks or if I want to talk about any tips regarding IELTS speaking, that time I would say some points like, um, personally, I believe one thing. That is, if I believe that, yes, I can. If I believe, yes, I can. That time, obviously, I will be able to do the work. But if I don't believe, if I don't keep the hope that, yes, I, I, I am not able to... Uh, do this kind of work that time this this is not correct okay so the first thing is that you have to believe that yes i can yes i have to do the work and i will be able to do your inspiration your self motivation will help you a lot to get a good score in your IELTS speaking secondly i would like to add one thing that is you have to do your practice or you have to work according to your plan what i say according to your plan. So without making a plan, um, you will not be able to uh, do something or you will not be able to achieve something which will be greater, which will be outstanding. Okay. So that is why actually you have to make a plan. That is what, uh, what you are going to do or what uh, is your future plan or what is your aim. That, so you have to make a plan at first. After making the plan, you have to work according to the plan. I hope you understand. And uh, number three, I would like to say one thing that is, you have to read or you have to do your practice willingly. Okay, willingly you have to do all the things according to your, or which are related to your IELTS, uh, IELTS module or like IELTS speaking or IELTS listening, or as we are talking about IELTS speaking. So I would like to say that is, uh, you have to speak or you have to do practice willingly because Suppose uh, your teachers or your um, parents are uh, saying you that yes, you have to read. You are uh, uh, without if you don't read that time, it will be uh, a great hamper for you. No, in this way, or you, you will not be able to learn something. You have to learn, or you have to do something from your own brain, from your own heart. Okay, from your own. If you are not able to do something from your mind, that time you will never be able to get a good score from any kind of sector, not only about IELTS, if I talk about any other sectors, like uh, any job or any kind of uh, personal sector, that then you will not be able to um, get achievement from this sector. So you have to do this willingly and you have to do this cheerfully because 
if you don't enjoy your work you will not be able to feel your work okay so another thing i would like to ask that is you are doing lots of practices and you are preparing yourself properly you are making plans you are working a lot everything you are doing properly and correctly and uh, sequentially as well but if you don't get a proper guideline from any mentor or from any senior or from any proficient one that time you will not be able to judge yourself am i clear that is if you don't get any kind of um feedback like feedback or if you don't get any kind of proper guideline that time you will not be able to know your mistake so if you don't know your mistake how you will be learn how you will learn or how you will be able to um, show yourself um, in front of the nation okay first of all you should know that is what's your mistakes okay uh, what is your mistakes and you have to know your mistake at first so for this reason a proper guideline is completely mandatory i hope you uh, got my point and last of all i would like to say one thing and after the saying this thing i will finish my uh, speech that is all of you know one thing that is practice makes a man perfect practice makes a man perfect so suppose you were uh, thinking you were sitting in your bedroom and you were thinking that um, by the grace of almighty i am intelligent yes i am intelligent and uh, i know various kind of things so i don't need any kind of practice definitely if i sit in front of the examiner or if i um, <laughs> uh, do the uh, if i sit for the ielts exam i will get 6.5 or 7 so i don't need to need i don't need to do any kind of practices or i don't need to uh, do hard work that's completely wrong dear viewers that's completely wrong because if you don't prepare yourself or if you don't do the warm up session like the practice then you will not be able to get a good score or you will not be able to uh, prove yourself how much proficient you are how much uh, knowledgeable you are i hope that uh, you understand my point and uh, i believe from my personal perspective that is it will be um, very much benefited if you uh, focus on our tips and if you follow our instructions so that's all for the time being i would like to um, invite our um, sir and uh, that is sir please share your experience or share some tips from your uh, own experience you just some share some tips with our viewers okay thank you sir uh, you say so many things that is uh, really helpful for getting a good score okay thank you very much for uh, this helping tips My from pleasure. you okay so uh, i want to share top 10 tips to improve ielts speaking 10 tips for shortly i just use their shortly okay so at the first time mr wafiqul al rafi uh, he commented there sir could you get some advice some tips okay just i just uh, okay mr murad hok commented there sir vocabulary shikar easy way to bolben kibhabe mone rakha jay kindly bolben okay sure we just share the same uh, uh, your answers is well and rahat husain bappi or oh, rahat husain bappi again commented there what extent we can use idiomatic expressions as well as phrasal verb in our speech okay uh, there are so many idiom idiomatic uh, parts is there uh, like there's a, i just use one kind of idiomatic uh, words there as far as i am concerned okay that means it just tells your opinion in my opinion so far as i can remember that okay that's a total long collocations you can use their idiomatic language but another time i can see text phrase and idioms you never use their phrase and idioms in your book, uh, in your uh, speaking test because phrase and idioms always difficult to understand even sometimes for the examiner not the students but sometimes examiner will unable to understand the idiomatic phrases okay so try to avoid the idiomatic phrases in your main ielts uh, uh, speaking exam okay now i just want to share top 10 tips for myself to uh, students okay so first tips is they are learn phrases not just individual words phrases that means two or three things joining together then it will be a phrases so if you study individual individual english words in isolation this is what happens when you need to speak you have to think a lot think a lot in order to combine the individual words in the right order 
using the right grammar and in a way that makes sense. That's why too much work. If you focus on learning phases instead, then you will have to ready answers and responses for any situation. No need to overthink. Focusing on phrases will help you speak English in complete sentences more naturally. <laughs> okay, so uh, tip number two, listen to more English. Listen to more, more, more English. Okay, you are an IELTS student, so you listen more and more English during uh, taking your IELTS course. So most English learners read too much and listen too little. Read too much, but listen too little. So, but when babies and children learn English, they listen first, okay, then speak, and later learn to read and write. Half of a conversation is hearing the other person, and if you don't understand what they are saying, how can you respond correctly? So if you want to improve your English speaking, okay, so spend more time listening. So tips number three, it is speaking by yourself both reading aloud and speaking spontaneously. Okay, so reading English text out loud will help you with the second part without having to worry about the first part. It will train your mouth and lips to pronounce English words more easily. Speaking English spontaneously by yourself is also extremely helpful in developing your ability to put your ideas into words Without the pressure of real conversation, you can look at a list of discussion questions and response out loud in English, speaking alone, alone. Okay, it might feel a little safe, but remember, this is a great training of your speaking English and there's nobody to hear your mistake. So tip number four, practice thinking in English. Do you think in your native language and then translate it into English in your head before speaking? No, 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 no. Don't do this. It often results in sentences that don't sound natural in English because their sentence structure is often different in English and your native language. So also, it takes way too much time to think and translate when you are in a conversation. One of the biggest secrets to speaking English fast and fluently is to learn to think directly in English. The great ways is that this is a skill you can develop with practice and you can practice any time. So while taking the bus, while waiting in line, <clears throat> sorry, while sitting at home, try thinking in English for a few minutes today to start building this habit. Okay, tip number five, get an online conversation partner. Online conversation partner, get, get. So how can I practice speaking English if I have nobody to, go with, to talk with? So there are conversation exchange websites where you can find a partner who speaks English but wants to learn your native language. You can then schedule a conversation session and speak half in English, half in native language so that both of you can practice. So it's also a good to have someone help correctly in yours in a relaxed, low pressure situation. Here are some examples of conversation exchange website, I think. I just uh, give you at the letters of our session today. And tip number six, remember that communication is more important than grammar. Com communication is more important than grammar, grammar. Okay, so do you get nervous when speaking because you are afraid of making mistakes? Remember that goal of speaking English is to communicate, communicate. Although grammar is important, Grammar is important. It is less important than communication while speaking English. There is a simple example I just used there. Uh, yesterday I uh, went to a party. Not a party, it's a, a friend party. So this sentence is grammatically correct. But does successfully communicate your message? An English speaker, speaker will understand you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yesterday I go to a party on a restaurant at a restaurant okay so this sentence is not grammatically current because yesterday i go to party at a restaurant but i go here is grammatically mistake okay so the sentence is not grammatically current but does successfully communicate your message and then english speaker will understand you okay so even you are grammatical error but he understands you it's better to say something wrong and still communicate successfully than to say nothing, okay? So also the grammar of spoken English is more flexible than grammar of written English. 
So don't worry too much about grammar when speaking. Okay, dear students, try to keep in mind. Okay, speaking English tip number, uh, I just want to sh uh, share our tip number seven for I'll just speak in English. Okay, speak slowly, slowly. Trying to speak English too fast won't make you sound like a native speaker. Instead, it can actually make more difficult for the other person to understand you. Speaking English slowly has two advantages. It gives you more time to think what to say. Okay, more time. But when you just speedy, speedy, and uh, uh, after that, you just uh, forget what you want to say there. Okay, so slowly, it makes your speech clearer so the other person can understand you. Okay, dear students. So over time and with practice, your speaking English will get faster naturally. And tip eight, if you forget a word, use other words. Okay, if you forget a word, use other words. It's very common for English learners to stop a sentence in the middle because they have forgetting the word they want to use, but try to be creative. The other person can help you if you describe the word you want by using other English words. For example, one of my students was describing a recipe and he did not know the word of one of the vegetables. So he said, it's white, like a ball. And when you cut it, you cry. Okay. So when you cut it, you cry. So I said it's an onion. Okay, so you can say all that my student communicated successfully by using different words, even though he did not know the word he wanted to use. Okay, tip number nine, relax and have a positive, confident attitude. Relax, have a positive and confident attitude. If you make a mistake or forget a word when you are speaking English, it's okay. Don't be nervous or afraid. The person who you are talking to will understand and be patient with you. If you are insecure when you speak English, it will be even more difficult to speak. So don't say, my English is terrible or sorry for my bad English. Okay, these are negative comments and they are not helpful. So instead think, I can speak English before every conversation in order to give yourself more confidence and help speak better. Okay, and the last tips I want to share with my students and the audience from Facebook and YouTube, learn the real English phrases for everyday life. Learn real English phrases, phrases two or three, verb, engaged with other, that means phrases for everyday life. Today, you have the opportunity to take an English course that focuses on useful English in the context of conversation. The everyday English speaking course is a simple, fun, an effective way to learn new phrases and expressions and improve your speaking ability. Each lesson is based on conversation and reading and listening to the dialogues will help you improve your understanding. The next part of the lesson explains and expands upon the vocabulary you heard and conversation. Teaching new expressions and showing you to use them, there are lots of practice phrases which you can listen to and repeat to improve your English speaking. Finally, each lesson has quizzes to help you test yourself and remember the new phrases because sometimes students are unable to take any kind of quizzes. This is wrong way, dear students. Okay, always you take the quizzes and opportunities for you to send speaking samples and get feedback from on your spoken or speaking English from your teacher. Okay, feedback is the crucial point here. Okay, so that's the all things I wanted to share with uh, you, sir, and uh, with our students. Okay, so can we look for another time for our, uh, for our, um, okay, for our Facebook section, we just, uh, we just uh, uh, take a comment box from our uh, Facebook page, okay, so just uh, I scroll over my mobile phone here, okay. So, hello, okay, 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 just, we just could and would air babohar, okay. We just gave your answers, uh, dear Jaman. Okay, Mr. Janna Tamay Jabil, greetings, Hassan sir, glad to see you. Okay, thank you, sirs. Thank you, sir, for commenting there, and you also watched the session there. Okay, thank you. I'm really so appreciate. Okay, Mr. Radhusan Bappi, you get, uh, okay, you received your answer for our live session. 
Mr. Muttakim Choudhury, sir, all model barber bever kiba be kora jai. Okay, we just gave the answers during our live session. Which model is used more? Which model? Okay, there are variety of model there. Okay, we just uh, um, talked so many model there. Okay, so can you please repeat the our conversation again? Then you got your answer. Thank you very much for commented there. Okay. Uh, Mr. Murad Hub, sir, vocabulary shikar easy way to bolen, kiba be money raka jai and kindly bolen. Okay, Mr. Murad Hub, vocabulary is the more powerful things in English. If you don't have the vocabulary, then how can you express your views with the audience or with the native English speaker with someone else? Okay, so vocabulary uh, never memorizing with your brain because if you memorize any kinds of vocabulary for today, but what will be happened in the next day? Next day, you just you are just banished away from your brain. Okay, so this is a realistic way to memorize your vocabulary everyday purposes. Just go to the market or just go to the any stall and purchase a English paper. Okay, and English newspapers will always helpful to get variety of vocabulary from theirs. Okay, if you purchase or buy uh, some English papers for a week, then uh, when you uh, don't know any kinds of words in the paper or newspapers, then you just bullet it these sentences. And after this, you, you write down these sentences in your notebook and with the collocations here. Collocation, that means sentence making. So uh, there is a, a online dictionary there, www.onlinecambridgedictionary.com. So here you can just put a word in this uh, their search buttons and you have found so many collocations with synonyms step by step. And every day you just memorize only five sentences with sentence structure and collocations. Then after one month, you will just see your magic. What will be happen? The happening things you are memorizing all kinds of vocabulary there. Why? Because you are using your notebook and just bulleting theirs and memorizing it here into brain. Okay, thank you very much. So, Mr. Murad Hawk. So, just go to the market and try to purchase a newspaper from uh, a newspaper only for you and for other audience there. Okay, sir. Uh, hello, sirs. Maybe we'll just stop our live session for today. Yes. Okay, sir. So maybe we just covered all of the questions here, Mr. Salman. Salman, come on, sir. Alhamdulillah. I'm pretty fine. We are pretty fine here because here is our here. So mixer is here. Okay, sir. So dear students, so take care all. See you soon. And so don't forget to enroll our VIP online IELTS class. We have two types of class: online VIP IELTS program. And another is offline BAP IELTS program. Offline BAP IELTS program will held at our office in our coaching center. <laughs> what will be uh, talked there? Okay. And another one is online BAP IELTS program, which is completely by taking online. Okay. So try to switch on your IELTS journey with Hassan's IELTS Academy. Inshallah, you will get all the contents what you really need. And you need a good score, a good desired score. Hassan's IELTS Academy helps you to boost your increase, to boost your IELTS score, what you really need. Thank you, sir. Okay. So can you say something about our students to enroll our new classes? Okay. So I would like to say one thing that is many students now who are doing our online courses, I believe that they are getting the feeling of our offline courses. What uh, they, uh, what do they, uh, felt actually pre, uh, in the previous day so and we are trying to provide our best effort isn't it? we are trying to provide our best effort though it's online it's not a big deal but we are trying our level best to uh, make them happy so that they can easily understand and they can enjoy the lesson so online or offline um, that's not the main or actual matter there is from our sector, we are trying our best. And from your side, if you do your best, obviously um, the equation or the result will be a blast for us, isn't it? Thank you very much. Thank you all. Allah is.